This is KGW News at Noon. We start this afternoon with breaking news involving a former trailblazer. Ben McLemore is in the Clackamas County Jail this afternoon on multiple charges, including rape and sexual abuse. His arraignment is scheduled for later today. McLemore was a top 10 pick in the 2013 NBA draft. He played for five different teams over the course of nine seasons, including two seasons ago with the Blazers. After that year, he went overseas to play with teams in China, Greece and Spain. We'll cover his court appearance today and bring you updates in our later newscasts. If we do lose in there, we will appeal, just like we knew that state would appeal this week. We get to them folks with black dresses, it's going to be a dogfight. That is a gun store owner in Kelso who's talking about the ongoing legal battle over Washington's ban on high capacity magazines. At this point, the ban remains in place, but an appeal is headed to a higher court. Thanks for joining us here at noon. I'm Drew Carney. That gun store owner continues to challenge the ban, which covers the sale, manufacturing and distribution of high capacity magazines. KGW investigative reporter Evan Watson has more on this debate after talking to the store owner in Kelso. It was it was magazine day for sure. The, I had no idea that people would be that excited about getting that interlude of freedom back. Wally Wentz owns Gators Custom Guns in Kelso. He's challenging Washington's ban on the sale of high capacity magazines in court. When a Cowlitz County judge on Monday ruled the state law is unconstitutional, Wentz opened the store on an off day, put out a blast on Facebook, and sold as many magazines as he could to hundreds of customers in just under two hours. How many can I have? Is there a limit? I said, what's the limit on your gold card? Washington's ban on the sale, manufacture, import, and distribution of high capacity magazines is back in place now. Attorney General Bob Ferguson issued an emergency stay, which the state Supreme Court approved. Ferguson said the law saves lives, is constitutional, and is essential to addressing mass shootings. Wentz always expected an appeal. It's going to be a tough argument for them to throw this out. And if they do, it's, the, it's really going to smell like fish. The Washington senator who sponsored the magazine ban bill expects an appellate court to find that it is constitutional. They'll look at this as a public safety issue, which it is, and it does not impair someone's ability to have a gun. Uh, it just limits the number of, of uh, bullets that can be fired at one time. And Robert Shintra, really whose sister good. Carmen was killed in the Parkland shooting, says he's frustrated and nervous the law could be stripped back, but he'll keep pushing for more gun regulation. I feel very truly that if I was to not do anything um, about Carmen's death, just try to forget that it happened, um, that it, it that that her death would be in vain. And by using it as something to catalyze myself and to catalyze others into action, we can have it mean something. Meanwhile, Wentz is hoping for a legal win so he can put high capacity magazines back on the shelves. He says he lost 30 to 40 percent of his business with the ban and he wouldn't hesitate to appeal the case all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. If we do lose in there, we will appeal, just like we knew that state would appeal this week. We get to them folks with black dresses, it's going to be a dogfight. Again, that was Evan Watson reporting for us here this afternoon. A hearing with the commissioner of the Washington Supreme Court is set for next Wednesday at this point to determine if the emergency stay order will remain in place. Then the following week, the Washington Attorney General's office will argue that this case should go directly to the state Supreme Court. All right, let's get to some other local headlines this afternoon. Portland Fire and Rescue says a person died in their backyard while trying to remove a large tree stump. Fire officials say the person was attempting to lift a 1,200 pound stump out of the ground, but the safety equipment they were using to protect themselves failed and that stump fell on top of them. Firefighters set up a high angle rope system to move the stump and retrieve the person's body. In Gresham, police are looking for a group of teens caught on camera harassing a man before one of them knocked him unconscious. Surveillance video shows what appears to be a teenager hitting 58 year old Terry Poulter right there in the back of the head with a skateboard. This happened around 530 Sunday evening near Northeast 2nd and Roberts Avenue. Poulter was taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. Gresham police also notified the Gresham Barlow School District just in case they find out that these suspects are students. 
Milwaukee's police department has a new chief. Ryan Burdick delivered the chief's oath of office last night during a city council meeting. Burdick started with Milwaukee police in 2002, and since then he served as detective, patrol sergeant, and operations captain. He also helped the department launch its body camera program and start its drone program. Well, national reports say electric vehicle sales are down in the U.S., but the State Department of Ecology says EV sales in Washington are booming at this point. The department says 2023 was a record year for EV and hybrid sales in the state, accounting for nearly 20% of all cars sold, which they also say more than doubles the national electric vehicle sales average. The state also reported a 43% increase in EV and hybrid registration between 2022 and 2023. All right, a quick break from our local headlines this afternoon to bring you lots of sunshine. Beautiful cloud, beautiful skies, I should say, Rod. Not really many clouds at all out there today, and you promised this very situation this morning on Sunrise. I'm not sensing any complaints. You're happy with the I'm way the cameras look. You, yeah, but the skies all the above. <laughs> it's really gorgeous outside. All of our cameras show the same picture, blue sky. Cannon Beach Live has seen a lot of people walking on the beach. The tides somewhat out. It looks like you can almost wade to uh, Haystack Rock. This is great to see. You got folks on the 10th green or fairway. You got a gentleman there putting, it looks like. Beautiful day to play golf or work outside. That's Lewis River Golf Course up in Woodland. Downtown Portland, barely a cloud in the sky. We're at 55 degrees. I think we are right where we need to be to have a good chance to be as warm as 70 degrees this afternoon. Winds are generally light from the north northwest will be mostly clear in 63 for the evening. The next chance of rain rolls in tomorrow night, and it won't be sunny like this tomorrow, so enjoy this afternoon. If we make it to 70, I believe it'll be the eighth such day that we will have so far this year. That's the forecast for now, Drew. All right, we'll have more from Rod coming up here in a few minutes. Right now, though, back to some local headlines. Portland Public Schools is looking to add a junior ROTC program to the district, but not everyone is on board with this idea. KGW's Thomas Schultz spoke to people both for and against it. After a Portland Public School proposal emerged to add JROTC programs, some pushed back. If kids want to sign up for the military, they can go down to the recruiting station and talk to a recruiter, you know. John Gresho was a conscientious objector to the Vietnam War. He says instead of adding JROTC programs, Portland Public should prioritize vocational studies. Others disagree. It gives kids like that a something to strive for. When, James Hebe you know, is a state representative representing parts of Clackamas County. He also served in the Marine Corps and says JROTC gives students direction. It would have made things a lot easier for me. It would have uh, filled up a lot of my time in the afternoons and kept me out of a little bit of mischief. And a Portland public spokesperson says schools would have the choice to add or forego JROTC programs. Though the proposal comes at a time when PPS is shedding staff as part of $30 million in budget cuts. And in a letter to board members, district officials say it's unknown how Portland Public would pay for JROTC. Though they're just beginning to examine how JROTC curriculum aligns with career and technical education programs. And as PPS moles adding JROTC in schools, debates swirl outside of class. They're preying on students who have no other choice and who see their way out of systematic inequality as the military. I think it's a great honor to serve my country. Thomas Schultz, KGW News.